My name is Rapsony, and welcome back to Hearthstone Arena, where we have a list of requests. Oh, wait, I should probably strike off that Paladin one. That was last arena, right? <clears throat> so I've got Shaman, Hunter. Those are the first two. If neither of those appear, then there's Mage by Leon Jarman. Okay. Will prevail. Oh, baby. Uh, it's gotta be Blood Mage Thalmos, right? Millhouse Mana Storm ends up in situations where you might fuck yourself entirely. Flame Leviathan almost always fucks you entirely. But Blood Mage Thalmos at the very least will draw you a card, but also could add to my ability to procure lethal through the spell damage. Oh, I love the Ogre Brute. It's so strong. Even when it misses, it's so strong. Zombie Chow is a really good early game card. Mad Scientist. Well, just because the other two are so bad, I'll take the Mad Scientist, which gives me a much higher uh, impetus to pick uh, things that are secrets. Iron Beak Owl as a silence in the deck. Mirror Entity is a terrific secret. I couldn't pass it up and pick one of the mechs, even though both of those mechs are pretty strong in this deck. I couldn't pass it up and pick one of those mechs because having the Mired Scientist bring out a Mirror Entity is so fucking strong. So, Blood... That works fine. Uh, Vaporize is a pretty weak secret and Kirin's Tall Mage isn't exactly incredibly powerful. I mean... I could go Blizzard? Yeah, I'll go Blizzard just in case I don't get board clear. Scarlet Crusader is the strongest out of these, plus it's another for my 3-drop slot. Mana Worm? How many early game spells do I really have? I don't think I have enough to justify a Mana Worm. I'm gonna take the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Ooh, actually, this is interesting. Arcane Intellect or Fen Creeper. Fen Creeper would help me stall an aggressive game, and Arcane Intellect would help me draw in a match where I real. Well, you know what? I actually only have one source of card draw, so fine. But still, I think the Fen Creeper could have been a really good decision for me. Um, Zombie Chow, Bloodfin Raptor, Blood Mage. I don't have enough early minions to look at Flesh Eating Ghoul and go, oh, it's definitely going to go insane, right? The way that I feel about Flesh Eating Ghoul is if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't become a 4 3 on the turn that it's played, it's pretty much, you know, worse than almost every other card. Uh, Priestess of a Loon, maybe even? Just for another 6 drop that uh, restores 4 to my hero? No, that's too optimistic. My phone is still on for some reason, because I'm a big ding-dong. Excellent. So Spider Tank is perfectly fine in that slot. Archmage, just because it has the spell damage, plus it's got decent distribution of stats. Iron Fur Grizzly. I'm not liking how high we're going on this uh, three slot. Oasis Snapjaw is fine. Bolt of Ogre is really good for the end game. These are all really bad. I'll take Light Warden, because it has one more health. Ogre Brute. I, I'm liking having a lot on the four, uh, sorry, on the three slot, but I need more on the four and upwards. Okay, two mech yetis makes me feel a lot better about that. Another, another mirror entity for the uh, mad scientist. Or a frostbolt even for removal. I don't have much direct removal, so I'll actually take a frostbolt. Uh, I would take the spider tank in almost every other situation, but I've got so many threes that I'm going to take the stranglethorn tiger. So many threes that I'm going to take the stranglethorn tiger. Water elemental is one of the strongest four drops in the entire video game. Chillwind Yeti is another one of the strongest uh, four drops in the entire video game. Uh, I have a lot of early game. Would I... I mean, like, one, two, three, four, five. I don't have much for the late game, but how am I going to get to the late game if I don't have a good early game? I mean, I've... Oh. I had to fill up on a lot of really trashy threes. That's the problem. Alright, I'll still take a Sorcerer's Apprentice rather than the horrible late game one. Uh, and then our final decision is Mind Control Tech or... No, nah, Defender of Argus. We do have enough early game to kind of make it hit now. Okay, we just need to seize board control early. We don't have that many ways to flip the board. We've got basically Blizzard. Um... We're pretty much hoping on the Mad Scientist uh, into Mirror Entity play. So if we draw a Mirror Entity, we're going to be really sad about that. Because we want the Mad Scientist to be drawing out the Mirror Entity when it dies. Because that's huge tempo swing. I mean, we get a card out for free. We cheat out that card. And then we get to duplicate whatever the opponent plays. So if they play off mana and they play a really shitty card, 
fine. They had to play a shitty card to play around the effect of one of our two drops. And it's even better than a lot of the other cards. Like, a lot of people would look at Voidcaller and Mad Scientists and Mad Scientist and roughly equate them, right? And the reason they do that is, oh, it's Death Rattle is that it brings, Gina, you know, one of your cards that. out. But the real huge difference between the two is that the Mad Scientist, uh, actually I'll just quickly make my mulligans, is that the Mad Scientist brings it out of your deck and the Void Caller brings it out of your hand. That's so big is a difference. Greetings. Hello. Because one generates card disadvantage well, and the other one generates card advantage. So in only one of those cases are you strongly relying on the strength of whatever you bring out. Drag no stupid. That's fine. Uh I could coin Scarlet Crusader. I mean, so I coin Scarlet Crusader, it attacks that, it's a 3-3 three, three, to a 3-1. Uh it's safer against, I guess, Bluegill Warrior. That's kind of the only thing that I'm really fret uh, threatened about, though. So, it doesn't even attack. It would go for my face, which means that I get to play the Flesh-Eating Ghoul next turn and then trade. You know what? That's actually a pretty good idea. Because the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice would usually force my opponent to trade because it'd be a 2-3 into my 3-2, right? Um, but this way I get to cheat out. Well, cheat out. I get to kind of make my Flesh-Eating Ghoul valuable by having it do the extra damage. It'll become a 3-3, three, three, not a 4-3. Sorry, I, I forgot that my Scarlet Crusader won't die after the first hit. Unless my opponent, like, musters this turn. Which I would not like to see. You know, I actually probably should have played a... What? I probably should have played a natural curve. Because 2, 3... Or 2, coin 3, and then 3 would have been stupidly strong. Join or die. This trade causes my opponent to buff this up. Uh, ultimately... You know, if they have a true super champion, they're gonna play it. They're gonna play the true super champion, they're gonna hit the flesh eating ghoul, and then they're gonna trade across here. Huh? I don't see how that was a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna try and force my opponent to use stupid things to remove my board now. I could silence my own Ogre Brute. That's a good idea. I could even silence my own Mech Yeti because I don't really need the spare part, but you, you be my opponent might. Is that enough of a downside for me to play? Like, I would do this and then Bloodfin Raptor. And then I would attack the face constantly. Worst case scenario, my opponent consecrates and then reinforces. They end up with a 7-3 and a 1-1. One, one, and I end up with no board. Okay, that's actually too bad. I do have to trade into it. Okay. Rather than immediately silence my Ogre Brute, I'll hold on to it because it can't attack this turn anyway, so there's no reason for me to silence it now. Instead, I just develop more power on the board through the Blood from Raptor. Not on my oh, I thought we were going to see a blessing in mine. Reporting for duty. Ah. Hey, at least it hit one. These are super strong. These mech yetis. I got a mech yeti and an iron fur grizzly next turn. It really depends on whether I have to respond to something, but that would be a really strong play. Be 
Okay, without spell damage in this, uh, as an assistant, my opponent does not have the damage to remove anything from my board. With Consecration. Uh, well, Consecration plus Silverhand Recruit grows in here. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> oh, actually, I should probably try this attack to the face just in case it misses. Yeah, it totally did. That's why a silence can be very useful. I like to have at least one silence in the game. Oh, bitch. That's the strongest of my cards. <laughs> Spell damage plus one, of course. Uh, the real thing here is if the mind control tech hits this, then I can ping the mind control tech. So basically I end up removing the mind control tech for a total of you know, one creature plus two mana. That's not going to matter. I don't have any eight plus cards in my deck. Okay. Time rewinder. It's not particularly helpful to me. Oh, come on, Deathwing. Are you fucking... So, not only have we seen Tyrion Forgering so far, but we've also seen Deathwing. I... This is the worst opening match. I actually don't have a way to deal with Deathwing right now. In fact, I, ju I just straight up don't in my entire deck. <sighs> All right, Let's see what we get. Job done. This is the only way I can keep myself alive this time. Now I need my opponent to play another Deathwing. I cannot believe that shit. I I actually just straight up cannot believe that. And that's the end of the game. You win this. Uh wait. Does this work? Yeah, there we go. The score is now fuck Deathwing. No. Nah. It breaks the barrier thing. Tyrion Forgering into Deathwing. Okay. Sure. Th yeah, okay. I just don't have words. It's been a while since I've uh, been torn apart by Deathwing. Jaina versus Uther. Just not glad to see it, I guess. I will fight with honor. You asked for it. These are all real good cards, but they're later in the ramp than I need. Plus, I have enough three drops that I can probably rely on getting another one. I would like Mad Scientist and not Mirror Image. Mirror Entity, sorry. I got a two and a three and a four, and they're pretty relatively independently strong. Hello. Greetings. 
Are you gonna coin reinforce? No, you're not. Well met. Drag, no stupid. This isn't the same guy, is it? Because that was the same opening. Well, actually, no, I was going second. So they did natural two drop for Stone Splinter. I could easily get wrecked this turn. And that's uh, Argent Protector. Okay. No Argent Protector. This one does more damage, so I'll actually remove it. Plus, if this one gets buffed by, I don't know, some stupid means, I can still kill it next turn and then play the Light Warden if I desperately need to. It would have to be buffed with a uh, Shattered Sun, basically, at this point. Oh, no. Nehru is on the case. Join or die. This is stronger for one important reason. My opponent has four mana right now. They've already used their coins. So if they want to develop the True Silver Champion, they're going to have a total of five possible damage. Four from the True Silver Champion, one from the Nerubar Weblord. Which means that they do not have a way... Uh, with that amount of mana to stop the water elemental from freezing things. I don't care if it does two damage less. It freezes and prevents the possibility of using the, um, True Silver Champion. Neither of these are good targets for the True Silver Champion anyway. So, yeah, removing the Naruba is fine. I don't even have that many battle cries in my deck. I wonder if it's possible that the Naruba Weblord was actually stopping my opponent from playing things more than it was stopping me. If that goes for the Yeti, I get to... That's fine, I guess. Weird. I guess they did get in free damage. I mean, I made the trade as a result, so... Okay. Fine. Fine. Good play. It's good play. It's a little risky because it means if I had, like, a fireball or something, that was just fucked forever. But, you know, I guess it was good play. Not gonna play the Light Warden. Not yet. See, the thing with the Frost Elemental is if it runs into the Water Elemental, then it forces me to make the trade with the uh, Mechanical Yeti. Well, no, make the trade with the Baldur Stoker at some point in the future. I do get to kind of wait a turn, though. Huh? Now it has more damage. Did they not know that's how that works? By the way, if you humility something... Humility... Sorry, not humility. If you were a quality something, right? Bring it down to 1 HP. Then that goes there? If you will quality something, bring it down to 1 HP, and then silence it, it goes back up to its full amount of HP, no matter what damage it had before. I'm just gonna develop a board. I don't really have to care at this point. I kind of wanted to get the Mad Scientist out as soon as possible, because if I draw the Mirror Entity, suddenly the Mad Scientist is a 2-2 two, two for 2. But if I don't have the Mirror Entity, if the Mirror Entity still lies in my deck, 
then the Mad Scientist is a 2-2 two, two for 2, which summons a secret, which would cost 3 mana. So it draws a card, and then it plays it for free. And I know what it's going to be. Oh, it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. Powering up. Portals online. Okay, I currently have a total of 12 damage that I can inflict upon an opponent. Don't believe. Uh, the 12 damage would have been Whirling Blades and then Attack to the Face. Actually, it would have been 13 damage. Whirling Blades, Attack to the Face, and use my ping. This one's much easier than the first game. I cannot believe. Fucking Deathwing. Engaging TC-130. Mental dislocator. So, the first game had a mind control tech take my uh, Archmage as well. So, I've seen a mind control tech both games. Unless this is the same person. <laughs> I don't think it is, but it might be. Okay. I have 14 damage on the board. Fuck you. Well played, prick. Okay, 1-1. One, one. I don't think that was the same person. But if it was, I'm happy that they didn't draw either of the goddamn cards. We got Shrekt. Although, to be fair, we don't have high-end removal in this deck, right? I chose Frostbolt over better options because I needed removal. Jaina versus Uther. Amun-Ra. I will fight with honor. Oh, that's really good. You asked for it. Scarlet Crusader is good enough that I'll actually keep it in my early hand. Because if I get another solid 3-drop, I could just do Zombie Chow, Scarlet Crusader, solid 3-drop. Because then I get to kind of defend my board. What is it with fucking Arena and Paladins today? Jesus. No clue what's going on here. Like my invention. Alright. So I'm accelerating my curve, basically. Because this is a strong 3, and this is a strong 4, and this is a strong 4. So I'm actually just skipping a weaker 2. I'm using the coin for that mark, uh, fact. Also, this means, since I've used the coin, my opponent can't really generate a really good response right now, as far as I'm concerned. They need something like a spider tank. Yeah, which they don't have. They're gonna need an activator for that, so I'm just gonna hold off. I mean, you don't draft that unless you have Blessing of Mine or Blessing of Kings, or Argent... No, or Defender of Argus, or... Shattered Sun... Or a number of other cards in your deck. <clears throat> okay. So I can likely hypothesize that my opponent has some of those. But I don't have to play right now as if they do have those. I might just be able to straight up overrun my opponent here. Oh, Scarlet Purifier! Interesting! That's really interesting. Did you see what just happened there? That's cool. Well, I want to freeze the truce of a champion, but... <coughs> <laughs> Damn it. I want to freeze the truce of a champion, but it's possible my opponent doesn't even give me the opportunity to and just attacks my face so that I can't freeze that weapon in hand. Well, they can make that attack. Uh, ooh, no, Blizzard doesn't even help me. Hmm.
So I can remove everything but the Fairy Dragon. But then I can't play much at all. Right. Join or die. It's still the correct decision. So in terms of card value, I'm still ahead. As long as this dies and I don't top deck mirror image, mirror entity, sorry, this turn. That trades into that, that, ooh, that's bad. That's pretty annoying. No reason for me to attack with my 2-2. Well, there is one reason, and that's if I thought I was going to top deck uh, Mirror Entity next turn. Consecrate. I'm such a sad man. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. <laughs> Yay, I got a berserker. <clears throat> so I guess its health got buffed just so that I would have to trade the berserker for it? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Exactly how many cards deeper is my opponent? Zero. Okay, so we're kind of on board. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, Blessing of Kings, Iron Beak Owl. It's time for a little blood. Reporting for duty. We Iron Beak Owl that off, we attack, remove that guy, uh, and play the Oasis Snapjaw. Now, I would have played the Spider Tank, because it has the immediate ability to kill the Yamani Berserker, but the Yamani Berserker, if it wants to enrage off the Oasis Snapjaw, is going to get killed by Fire Blast. If that's Consecrate, I'm going to be mad. Well, that's... that's cool. I froze it so that it can't attack my, um... my spider tank. Or, optimally, my Oasis Snapjaw. I need some of my heavier cards, and I need them quick. Oh! Me? Mm -hmm. No reason not to play Light Warden now. Actually, there is one reason. What if my opponent uses the Spectral Knight to kill anything except the Chilwin Yeti? Then I'd have to deal an odd amount of damage to the Spectral Knight, which means that the Light Warden dies for free. Yep, kind of like that. Oh, Blood Mage Almas, nice to see you. I mean, I either go that, that, or this, that, that. Ping one. So that results in me with a 1-1 one, one and a 4-1, but this, this, and then attack the face and ping results in me with a 4-5. Okay. I don't have 
anything except for Frostbolt for direct damage. So I don't have to worry about uh, Blood Mage Thalmos dying. It's just card draw for me right now. Okay. That's actually really good if I draw a minion next. If I draw a minion next, there's entirely likely possibility. You're kidding me. Mm hmm. Then I can ping that next turn. There was an entirely likely possibility that I just put Defender of Argus between the two minions that I had and then just attack with a face for the rest of the game. I'm just shit scared of top decks right now. <laughs> really am. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay. My seal for Argus. I have such strong control of this video game right now. Deathwing? Are we gonna see another Deathwing? Or even fucking, uh... You hit what from the top deck? Oh, this game can be frustrating. Yes, it can. Oh well, it's fine. This is probably the end of the game. I mean, my opponent needs either a really, really big taunt, uh, or... Yeah, or a really big heal. Well played. Well played. Reporting for duty. The victory is... <sighs> we deserved that win after... Well, let's face it, the first match. Destroy them all. Hang on, did I not get a... Oh, wait, I totally already got it. Cool. I was just wondering, didn't I finish my quest for two mage victories? Yeah, I did. It just showed me that, and I have just the shortest memory of all human beings. Jaina versus Uther. I will fight with honor. You asked for it. All of these are pretty bad. I mean, none of them, uh, except for maybe the Stranglethorn Tiger, are respectively the strongest on their slots. Or independently the strongest on their slots. That's actually so good that I'm going to coin Mad Scientist. Hello. Especially because I have so many twos, so um, it's worthwhile. I'll show them all. I might even cheat out a... I might even resultingly cheat out a uh, a mirror image before it's even possible for a mirror image to have naturally been played. I guess the worst thing for me right now would be muster. Not on my watch. Oh no. Yep, didn't draw it. Excellent. Oh, that was so so good, so good. Uh, ping attack face. You know what? It could be blessing of kings next turn, and I am not about that life. So I'll actually ping it in the attack face. I just don't want to be blessing of kings. That's it. Blessing of kings isn't even that rare. Thank you. Maybe that was the weakest card my opponent had in hand, but now I'm going to get draw a card. Oh, I forgot to attack for four damage. Whoops. Whoops. Totally should have run in with that, uh, that cult master there. Oh. Okay, uh, Iron Big L, Scarlet. No, wait, there's only. There's no target on the board other than the thing, so. I might as well just attack face. Go! Hey? 
Is it gonna reduce this guy's health? No, it isn't? Okay, fine. That's gotta be avenge then, right? So it wasn't noble sacrifice, it wasn't repentance, and it wasn't penitence. No, wait, it could be repentance. I always get repentance and penitence mixed up. One of them is when one of your minions dies, bring it back to life with one HP. And the other one is when your opponent plays an HP, uh, a minion, set its uh, HP to one. Join or die. Bring it back to life? Yep. There's no reason for me to play the IMB gal now. And hey, what if I fucking get Tyrion again? This is, by the way, the fourth paladin in a row. I don't know what it is with Arena, but recently I've been facing a lot of the same classes in a row. Like, I think I faced five hunters in a row in the last uh, last draft. Truth is Something like that. Hey, it works. Consecration leaves me with a 3-2. Uh, I still need to develop a more powerful against Consecration field. Has anyone noticed every single time I say the word Consecration, my opponent immediately plays it? Is it just me noticing that, or uh, is everyone else noticing that? <clears throat> so I can't play a 4 and a 5, and I can't play a 5 and a 6, right? So best plan is 6 plus ping. Value-wise, the best plan is 6 plus ping. It also leaves me with stuff that will stick to the field. So I've got to think about my tech cards that I've lost, alright? So I don't have a silence anymore, I don't have a frostbolt anymore. And those are two pretty important cards for me. Because they serve very singular purposes that none of my other cards are serving. So now I play a 5 and a 4. If my opponent has a true super champion, they have to use it this turn to kill the Bolt of Soga. Otherwise, I'm going to freeze them into eternity. This looks like a third win. Um, but I'm gonna wait until I get to 4 and 1 before I cut to a part 2, because I've seen this fucking thing play out before, and it wasn't pretty. Reporting for duty. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. I'm ready for this. I'm fine to trade directly, especially considering I have arcane intellect and I have strong minions in hand. And strong minions on the board. Spell damage, spell damage, plus consecration, or are we gonna see another fucking uh, mind control tech? Oh, that'd be beautiful. Glory to the Sindora. You actually devalued your minion by doing that. And I'll tell you why. I mean, it caused one more damage to do that. Because I've got this trade, which I was going to do to the, uh, to the other one anyhow. There's no great combination of these, so Arcane Intellect. Okay, and that should be pretty much the end of the game. How much damage do I currently have on the field? Good question, Ryan. Let me just answer that for you. I've got a total of 18 currently on the field. Using my hero power as well. Oh, well played him. There we go. Him or her, well played them. Destroy them all. We've managed to complete another quest. Excellent. That is going to guarantee me at least one more arena. Well, two more arenas afterwards. Hell to the fuck yes. I'm finding that my joy with Hearthstone has been gradually coming back ever since I stopped the Rank series. Something about the Rank series just... ...started to grind on me. I think it's that it felt like a grind.
right? It was kind of like, yeah, I could get higher, but it seems to me that you lived your life like a candle. No, I mean, yeah, I could get higher, but it seems like getting higher is almost entirely based off playtime. I mean, there's definitely a huge skill component to it too, but, you know, if, if you win 50% of your matches, you'll still get to Legendary. Why? Because you have win streaks, right? So if you win three matches in a row, you suddenly get four stars rather than three stars. And then if you lose three matches in a row, you lose three stars. So you've won three, lost three, and you're still one uh, star ahead of where you were before. So all you need to do is hit win streaks, basically. But I think the meta just felt like really stale. Because there's, there, there's like a few good counters to death rattle, right? Like you've got silence, you've got uh, Scarlet Purifier. I mean, you've got a few cards that feed off of death rattle, Scarlet Purifier and... Uh... Wow. Scarlet Purifier and uh, what's the 2-3 the taunt for 3 that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each enemy death rattle minion. Um, that's another one that feeds off death rattles. There's many. There are many. Silence is probably the biggest of them, though. Like, you can just silence a creature with Death Rattle or silence a Death Rattle summoning creature and just go, yeah, okay, now you don't have Death Rattle. Hell yeah. But you can't do that with Mech. Mech is just so independently strong. Beasts, there's even things that you can fight against them with, right? Just all of the mech cards are so independently strong that it's very difficult to deal with them. Alright, Velen's Chosen, then attack my dude. Hit the 50-50 as well. Do it. Velen's Chosen. No, it's not a Velen's Chosen. Did you forget? Oh! Ooh, goodbye. <laughs> Yay. I'm in a pretty strong position, but then again, all my opponent needs to do is Shadow Word Pain my dude and then summon another Ogre and I'm fucked for a while. Uh-oh. Iron Beak Yeah. Oh, So it's almost always pretty obvious and certain to your opponent that you've got a mirror image because it's basically the only one that people summon. All right. Hmm. If it's cheated out via a uh, mad scientist, it might not be mirror image, but 99% of the time it's mirror image because it's just the strongest of the mage secrets. Cool, that's a free... 3-2 for me, I guess. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, thank you. So this makes me feel good about using my ping. Mm -hmm. okay, so. Hello. I was about to feel really bad about using my ping because it meant that I had to summon the Bold Vista. Uh, well, I had to give up on summoning the Bold Vista because it's six mana and I only had seven. But then I drew. That's unfortunate. Hey, at least I can be pretty certain that my opponent is not going to be summoning any secrets as a result of that mad scientist. Do I attack the face with this? I do. Because my opponent would have to trade both of their minions into that. Another mad scientist? Just don't be like Frostbolt or Blizzard. Uh, Arcane Intellect's kinda bad, I guess. That's the Frostbolt. That's. 
there's no bigger betrayal than when a card comes from your deck to fuck you up. I'm so hardcore, I didn't even stop to see if my opponent was going to get a secret from their priest deck, which doesn't have any secrets in it. Mm -hmm. It's a really good Shadow Madness target, it really is. It is. Grobashi Berserker. Hmm, I wonder what the Gurubashi Berserker is going to hit, because if it hits my Boulder Fist Ogre, I get to ping it and then kill it. Oh, no, wait, it would heal up, but then I guess that was unexpected. I was not expecting a concede there. Maybe they just had a trash hand, I guess. I thought there was a possibility, uh, quite frankly, a large possibility I was going to lose that one. All right. We're going to cut to a part two. You'll be able to find a link to part two down in the description below. Hope to see you there.